it's back. The Rusty Ranger returns. If you haven't seen this before, this is a 1986 Ford Ranger. It's got the Tic Tic 2.9 liter V6. Four wheel drive, manual transmission. I bought this truck, not running, for $300 about a year ago. Did a couple of videos about it. We ended up finding that the coolant temperature sensor was faulty. It had been replaced, but the new one had the pins were not installed correctly and it was not making a good connection. We also rebuilt the Mitsubishi manual transmission. I got a couple pretty good videos about that, I think. Anyway, I sold this truck to a local guy. He's been driving it for however long and he's having some problems with it. He said the engine stumbles, sometimes it dies, kind of especially when he's coasting or stops for a stop sign. So yeah, we're gonna get into it. The check engine light's not on, but I think we'll pull some codes and kind of go from there. All right, folks, we're working outside and it's the Friday before Labor Day weekend. So the traffic is just unreal. Bear with me. We're using the snap off scan tool. If you can scrape up enough cables and adapters, it usually plays pretty nice with OBD-1. There's the old EEC4 diagnostic port, plugs into this Ford adapter. It has to have 12 volt power, that's that cable there. Goes to a cigar lighter, which goes to an adapter that plugs or clips onto the battery. And then these adapters, they're for an older scan tool. So to go from that older data cable to the newer OBD2 cable, you have to have this DA5 adapter. If you have the newer adapters, you don't have to have this guy. Anyway, it usually does pretty good. Actually, if you're only working on American, like domestic vehicles, Snap-on scan tools are, are probably still the best. They're crazy expensive, but they they do pretty well in their, their little niche. Anyway, it has a pile of codes. So you gotta be careful on these OBD-1 vehicles. They're kind of weird about how they set codes, store codes, and clear codes. Uh, there's fast codes and slow codes and it just you got to take it all with a grain of salt so here's what i got out of it uh, key on engine off we had a 34 no egr flow 67 which is something with the clutch switch i guess 14 is a pip pip signal erratic so the pip is the hall effect sensor inside the distributor it's the pickup basically profile ignition pickup tells the thing when to fire the ignition. 18, no TAC, IDM. IDM is the ignition diagnostic monitor. So it basically is monitoring the coil. The computer is monitoring, monitoring the coil and comparing it to the PIP. And if it doesn't see the coil fire, it'll set that code. And then 32 EGR not controlling. These codes are key on engine running. We had a ECT out of range. That's a engine coolant temperature sensor, EGR not controlling, and then NOx sensor not sensed at test. So I think if I, if I remember right, we had the NOx sensor and the EGR codes before. We might have also had that ECT sensor code before. Anyway, I've done a bit of testing and the ECT sensor seems to be working fine. The resistance values are spot on to what we had before. Also, I unplugged and disabled the EGR, took that clear out of the equation, but I kind of accidentally stumbled onto the problem. If I let it idle for about 10 minutes, it will die. And sometimes it will restart and sometimes it won't. And when it doesn't restart, it has no spark. No spark.
right, the scope is monitoring the PIP signal, profile ignition pickup. All right, quick refresher on the Ford TFI ignition system. This is the TFI module, the ignition module. It bolts to the side of the distributor. It gets a signal from a Hall effect sensor inside the distributor. There's a trigger wheel that goes around with the distributor. This thing is capable of firing the coil independently without the ECM, but it shares the pickup from the Hall effect sensor with the ECM on the PIP line here, profile ignition pickup. And then the computer can choose to advance the timing or retard the timing, depending on what it thinks is appropriate. And it sends that signal back on the spout. So when we do the timing, we're gonna actually disconnect the spout. And essentially that just sends this back to its base timing. There's also an IDM, which is an ignition diagnostic monitor. And it essentially just monitors the coil to make sure that's actually firing. So if it sees a pip signal, but does not see the coil firing, it knows that there's a problem. There we go. Yeah, we got a pretty decent square wave signal. And then for whatever reason right there, it just shuts off. It's not losing power. Test light's still lit. I believe we have a bad profile ignition pickup. The EGR is controlled by vacuum. Pretty typical for this vintage, there's a, an electronic solenoid here that controls a couple of vacuum lines. One comes from the manifold, one goes to the EGR valve diaphragm. And I'm pretty sure this thing is kaput. Pretty sure this is a five volt coil in this solenoid. So that's a benchtop power supply set up for five volts. And it just maxes out on amps. This thing only goes up to 10 amps, but it's pulling, what, 8.4? Reverse it, 8.4. This is a new one. It must have a diode in it. So if we go the right way, yeah, 0.1 amps. So that's what it should do. This thing is junk. So the other piece of the EGR puzzle is this guy here. It's called a PFE, it's a pressure transducer. It has a tube that comes right from the EGR and it should be able to, to measure a small a small differential in pressure. So I got a tube hooked up here. And I, I can't see any change. So I managed to track down one of these things. Standard Motor Products VP6. That box has been on the shelf for a long time. Anyway, we're gonna try swapping it out real quick. Ford doesn't give us any real help on diagnostics. It just says, yeah, of course. To swap with a known good. So that's what we're gonna do. Well, that's a whole lot different already. Oh yeah. Okay. Confirmed.
this thing is junk too. I also tested the fuel pressure regulator. It seems to be working, but I don't know if you guys can see it. See that liquid in the line there? It's leaking fuel through the diaphragm. So we need to replace that. You know what's a hard word to say? Distributor. Distributor. Anyway, there it is. The pickup is here. To get it out, we have to take the, the whole thing apart. There's our new one. And what sucks is that this whole thing is new. The distributor was replaced before just before I got the truck. Well, there comes bike number two or three or four. They're on a mission today. Anyway, I think we gotta drive this pin out. Pull the gear off. Oh, well, there's bike four or three. And then the whole shaft and rotor should come out the end. And then we probably gotta press that off. module off this one's kind of well it's a little different because it's an aftermarket distributor normally you need this tool to remove the ignition module once upon a time every mechanic had one of those but this one just has Phillips head screws to it yeah new does not mean good uh, you remember the last time we worked on this we had that problem where yeah that thing's just loosey-goosey in there there's no way it's making contact I mean unless I'm missing something if I remember right when we worked on this the last time it had a problem where the engine would stumble because it was running super rich with that bad coolant temperature sensor and then it would recover and when the engine accelerated we would lose spark for like one whole revolution 
and yeah it shouldn't do that that had to be because of this pickup anyway there's the new one let's see how it fits let's see it goes like this yeah it fits a, fits a lot better I think that's right so now we need this little thrust washer and then we'll grab some grease grease up our shaft here Look. so the Hall effect sensor here should trigger every time it sees the edge of one of these windows and sometimes they have a narrow post. Yeah, there's there's one right there that's narrow. Okay, now we gotta put the gear back on. That's the fun part. That's it. Oh, do I have enough hands to do this? Probably not. Ooh. Okay. That's a compression gauge. So we got the spark plug out of number one cylinder. We're just cranking it over till it's on top dead center compression. All right, this is how it's supposed to be laid out. So we need to orient the distributor so that the rotor is pointed towards number one. On the cap, that would be this one here that they labeled number four. So we're gonna just start over. We've already got the distributor kind of stabbed in there. It's pretty close. Well. Maybe it's not close. Yeah, I think I need to need to back it up a little bit. It's pretty tricky because you have to get the the gear and the spline for the oil pump drive both aligned at the same time. So the only way you can really get the distributors stabbed in there is to do it while you're barring the engine over. So then it's just basically a guessing game. Right, I'm gonna back that up one tooth, I think. Okay, we're on the timing mark down there. And we're pretty well aligned towards number one, I think. Should be good enough to get it running. We'll have to, like I said, fine tune it with a timing light. All right, we're ready to check the timing. I've got my pickup on the number one plug wire. We need to disconnect the spout, which is up here. That is the spark output from the PCM. Come on, there we go. So you just pull that little link out and it disconnects that feature. And then actually, I didn't know this, I was just reviewing the timing procedure and I found a service bulletin and it says that you cannot accurately set the base timing using a remote starting switch. I guess that uh, the TFI module has to see the key go from start back to run in order to go to the proper the proper timing setting. So that's something to keep in mind. I didn't know that. And she's been purring away out here for about 30 minutes. No hiccups. No problems really. Looks pretty good. I'm sure you guys can't see it. It's right between 10 and 12.
Okay, we're down to just the knock sensor code. We got rid of our coolant temperature and our EGR. All right, folks, we passed. Key on, engine off. Fast code system pass. Continuous memory code system pass. So the only code we have is for the knock sensor. Uh, we can go ahead and replace it, I guess. I'm not too worried about it. They actually got rid of the knock sensor on the later model 2.9s. So they don't even have one. Uh, it's not too hard to change. It's down there underneath of the exhaust manifold, kind of behind the starter. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, I think we've fixed the things we came here to fix. Runs pretty good. Got our new fuel pressure regulator. Our new PFE sensor, new ignition pickup, new EGR solenoid. We are done under here. Right, let's go for a little drive. Transmission's nice and quiet, of course. All that 2.9 torque. It drives pretty nice, I gotta say. I'll be picking that corn in about three weeks. Well, I'm no farmer, but the beans don't look that great this year. Of course, just because they're kind of short doesn't mean they don't have a lot of beans on them. So, I guess we'll see. Prices the way they are, they're going to make money no matter what. All right, I think that's it. All right, folks, that's it for the Rusty Ranger. More bad new parts. That distributor can't be more than a year and a half old. It's only got about 1,500 miles on it. That's pretty poor performance if you ask me. And it's only getting worse. So, yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time.